Danny Hutton, who began his career with Hanna-Barbera Records in 1964, Chuck Nagrin, and Corey Wells, who signed with Dunhill Records, initially collaborated in 1967. They started as Redwood and recorded with Brian Wilson while the Beach Boys were working on their album Wild Honey. Redwood was on the verge of being one of the first musicians to be signed to the Beach Boys Brother Records. Shortly after dropping the Redwood identity in 1968, the vocalist enlisted the help of a new band, Three Dog Night, which included Ron Morgan on a guitar, Lloyd Sneed on drums, Joe Shermy from the Corey Wells Blues Band on bass, and Jimmy Greenspoon on keyboards. Morgan departed the band before the first album was completed, and afterward, he joined the Electric Prunes. Michael Alsop was soon hired to take Morgan's position on the guitar. Three Dog Night made their formal debut at the Whiskey A Go-Go in 1968 during a press party organized by Dunhill Records at 5 p.m. They were still working on their debut album, Three Dog Night, when they received positive feedback from the critical audience. The popular songs One, Try a Little Tenderness, and Nobody from the album Three Dog Night helped the band acquire notoriety and became one of the top drawing concert performers of their time. Three Dog Night recorded a lengthier rock and roll and funk inspired version of It Ain't Easy in 1970 titled Mama Told Me Not to Come. This rendition included Corey Wells singing lead in an almost comical vocal manner, Jimmy Greenspan playing a World Series electric piano, Michael also playing guitar, and Donna Summer on backing vocals, although she was uncredited. On the end of the year charts for 1970, Mama Told Me Not to Come reached number 11 of the year. The Recording Industry Association of America certified the single gold on July 14, 1970, the same day It Ain't Easy was certified gold. On July 4, 1970, it was also the number one song on the first episode of American Top 40 with Casey Kasem. In the song Joy to the World, some of the terms are meaningless. Axton wanted to persuade his record producers to record a new song he had created, so they asked him to sing any lyrics to the music. Three Dog Night recorded Joy to the World at American Recording Company, which was produced by Richard Podolor and engineered by Bill Cooper. Unlike most Three Dog Night tracks at the time, the song was recorded with all seven members of the band singing harmony rather than just the three lead vocalists. When the song reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in the United States in 1971, Axton and his mother Mae Axton became the first mother and son team to write a number one pop record in the rock era. May Axton co-wrote Elvis Presley's first number one song, Heartbreak Hotel. In a 1994 lawsuit, David P. Jackson claimed co-authorship of the song and alleged that Axton falsely claimed sole authorship. Jackson stated in the complaint that Axton frequently credited him for co-authorship. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit decided in Axton's favor. Black and White was recorded by Three Dog Night, who included on their 1972 album Seven Separate Fools, their rendition, which included a group of youngsters and a freely spoken recital by Danny Hunt in the song's coda part, reached number one in the U.S. Hot 100 on September 16, 1972, and topped the easy listening chart on October 7. Billboard listed as the 63rd best song of 1972. Three Dog Night sued their former booking agent, American Talent International, for $6 million in 1973 for continuing to promote to the public that the band was still with them. When in fact, they signed with William Morris Agency in October 1972. Other damages were sought to, as a result of ATI accepting deposits for the booking of Three Dog Night, whom they no longer represented. Joe Shermie quit in early 1973 owing to seemingly unresolvable issues. In 1973, he was replaced by Jack Ryland, and the band expanded to an eight piece with the addition of a second keyboard player, Skip Conti, who used to perform with X Blues Image in late 1973. Also, Ben Sneed departed Toto in late 1974 to create SS Fools with Shermy and Bobby Kimball. New guitarist James Smitty Smith and drummer Mickey McMeal were hired, but by 1975, Smith had been replaced by Al Siner of Rufus and the American Breed, and Ryland had been replaced by Rufus bassist Dennis Belfield. Mickey McMeal would go on to co star in the children's television series The Croft Super Show as Turkey, the drummer of Captain Cool and the Kongs. Danny Hutton was ill regularly by 1973 and he had acquired hepatitis as a result of his uncontrollable drug usage. The band was obliged to employ a trained nurse to give Hutton vitamin B12 shots and care for him so that he could continue traveling. Hutton could not attend several of the recording sessions for the albums and would only stay long enough to record one song. Corey Wells got dissatisfied with Hutton's frequent absences and he was dismissed from the band in late 1975. Jay Gruska took his position. 
Chuck Negron was arrested for drug possession just hours before the first concert of their 1975 tour but was quickly freed on a $10,000 bail. Coming Down Your Way, released in May 1975, did not sell well in the United States owing to poor promotion as a result of the band's recent transfer to ABC and the increasing popularity of disco music. Disappointed, the band decided that Till the World Ends would be the album's lone single, which ended up being the band's final Billboard Hot 100 Top 40 success. Jay Gruska traveled with the band in support of their final album, American Pastime, which was released in March 1976. Nonetheless, the record failed to sell well for the same reasons as previously mentioned on the other album. However, this album's sole song, Everybody's a Masterpiece, became an adult contemporary success. After Kant re-signed the early half of 1976, another former Rufus band member, Ron Stockert, was hired as the band's second keyboardist. On July 26, 1976, the ensemble performed their farewell concert at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. Three Dog Night reformed in 1981 and released the ska-inspired It's a Jungle on the Modest Passport Records label in 1983, which had some exposure on the new wave circuit. After Passport went bankrupt, the EP was unable to sell, except for Joe Shermie, who was replaced by Mike Seyfried until 1982 and subsequently by Richard Grossman until 1984, the reunion included all of the original members. Paul Kingry and Steve Ezzo, two guitarists, occasionally played with the band, stepping in for Alsop awesome on concerts he couldn't attend between 1982 and 1984. Ezzo took over for Alsop awesome after he left in late 1984 to attend to personal and family problems. Ezzo took over for Alsop awesome after he left in late 1984 to attend to personal and family problems. At the same time, Sneed was fired from the band. In early 1985, pianist Rick Surratt, previously a Poco and subsequently with White Snake and others, replaced Greenspoon, who was unwell and the band hit the road with a new line that includes Surratt, Steve Ezzo, bassist Scott Manzo, and drummer Mike Keeley. The band formed throughout 1985, but Negron was pushed back into treatment in late 1985. Surratt left the band to explore other opportunities, and Greenspoon rejoined the band with Negron in late 1985. And After a relapse into his drug problem, Negron was let go in December 1985, and the band continued with Wells and Hun fronting the band and Paul Kingery returning on guitar to cover Chuck's vocal harmonies. Their song, In My Heart, was included in Robotech the movie in 1986. In the spring of 1991, also returned to the group to replace Cuneo. Negron went to drug rehab but never returned to the band. More personal changes followed in 1988 when guitarist TJ Parker and vocalist and bassist Gary Moon replaced Kingery and Manzo and were later replaced by Mike Cuneo and Richard Campbell in 1989. Pat Botts took over as drummer for Keeling in 1993. Three Dog Night appeared on the Family Channel Spotlight on Country in 1993 which was shot in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Following Campbell's departure, Kingery rejoined the band as bassist in 1996. Joe Shermie, the original bassist, died on March 26, 2002. Three Dog Night, a collaboration with the London Symphony Orchestra, was published in May 2002. The album was produced at Abbey Road Studios in Los Angeles and London, and it features two new songs, Overground and Salt Stay Marie. In May 2002, they also released Three Dog Night Live with the Tennessee Symphonic Orchestra a DVD of a film symphony concert from 2000. Scott Manzo, a bassist from the 1980s, returned temporarily in the summer of 2004 to fill in for Paul King Group. Three Dog Night released the 35th anniversary hits collection featuring the London Symphony Orchestra in October 2004. Live versions of Eli's Coming, Brickyard Blues, Try Little Tenors, and Family of a Man were included on it, the CD. Three Dog Night, Grace Hits Live, a compilation of previously unreleased live recordings from gigs in Frankfurt, Germany, and Edmonton, London in 1972 and 1973, was published in August 2008. They released three new songs on October 24, 2009, Art of Blues, Prayer of the Children, and Two Lights in the Nighttime. On their 35th anniversary hits collection featuring the London Symphony Orchestra, they released two new tracks. When guitarist also was hospitalized in the summer of 2012 with an intestinal illness, Kingery was forced to return to the guitar while Danny's son, Timothy Hun, played bass. This happened again in the summer of 2015 when also was unable to attend several performances. Jimmy Greenspoon died of cancer on March 11, 2015 at the age of 67. Eddie Reisner, who had filled in for him when he felt unwell in mid-2014, took his position at the keyboards. Corey Wills, at the age of 74, died on October 21, 2015 as home in Dunkirk, New York.
The New York Times Magazine named Three Dog Night as one of the hundreds of artists whose work was destroyed in the 2008 Universal Fire on June 25, 2019. And together with Michael Alsman, the band continues to lead Three Dog and I on tour throughout the United States and Canada. Chuck Negron continues to perform solo as of 2021. He hasn't performed with Three Dog Night since 1985. Negron was featured in an episode of the A&E reality show Intervention about his son Chucky and grandson Noah in 2006. Negron has had four marriages, and his most recent one was last year on May 9, 2020. And that's what happened to Three Dog Night. Thank you for watching and let me know who do you want me to see do next on this channel. Thank you for watching once again and I'll see you in the next video.